Hello, we're going to talk about the filter solutions filter design process. We'll start with a filter solutions panel in its default configuration, except that we have selected embedded windows. Floating windows floats the designs across the desktop. Embedded is what we're going to use for this demonstration, which embeds windows in the uh, back plane of the tool. Now the numbers are what pops up initially when it's launched the very first time. And we'll see over here on the left, we have numerous filter designs to select from. Butterworth is the default. And over here we have ideal filter responses. Now if I select frequency response, this is not the frequency response of any analyzed filter that we've designed is simply the ideal response of any given Butterworth filter. And we can see several traces, the magnitude trace, the group delay trace, and the phase trace. Magnitude and group delay are the usual important parameters, so we'll turn off phase for now. And now we can have an easy way to look at the different kinds of filters that Filter Solutions designs. And in this case, it tells you here, fifth order, low pass, Butterworth filter. We have Gaussian. We will select frequency response again. And we can now see the Gaussian curve and the Gaussian group delay. And of course, Gaussian filters are primarily used for their time response. And we can see one right here, the time response. It has the fastest rise time with no overshoot of all of the filters out there. Now notice that we had to select these buttons specifically. We can work around that problem if you don't want to have to select buttons all the time. We go into our options panel. And over here in our options, we have an option called enable real time updates. And while we're here, I'll point out another important one, auto frequency time scales. If we're constantly changing our passband frequency and we don't want to have to go up and update our minimum and maximum frequency scales all the time, we can simply select this option and it will do it for us. Okay, the next one on the list is the Bessel filter. Here's our best Bessel filter frequency and time response. Notice our round magnitude curve and our flat group delay curve, Bessel filters exhibit a maximally flat group delay response, as shown. There's a light overshoot here in the time response. Related to Bessel filters are the linear phase filters. We get those by selecting equi-ripple group delay. Lots of ripple options. Let's select 1%. Our group delay will now ripple by 1% throughout the passband and then drop off. For example, if I had a much higher order filter, there's a 10th order linear phase filter. It pushes the flat group delay all the way out to almost 2 gigahertz, whereas a straight Bessel filter only goes to 1 gigahertz. Butterworth, we've already talked about. Let's skip Legender for now and go to Chebyshev. Now our default Chebyshev is 0.05 dBs of ripple in the passband. So that we can see it, let's select something we can see. Let's go with 5. Now we would never, probably not make one with 5 dBs of equi ripple, but we can see the passband in our curve now is 5 dBs. Here we go down minus five up to zero. But also notice what happens is our group delay has some very undesirable spikes around the as we get close to the cutoff frequency. This is important because non-flat group delay equals distortion. To keep our distortion down, it's desirable to keep our group delay as flat as possible, as in the Bessel filter. Legender filters Legender filters exhibit the highest cutoff frequency possible with what we call a monotonic passband. 
Let me save that. Let's change our upper frequency limit to 1 gigahertz. Turn off the group delay. We can see at no point has the Legender ever gone up. It always is either flat or down in the passband. And this is the most steepest pass cutoff frequency possible with this characteristic. Okay, the Chevy Chef 2 filter, Equiripple stop band instead of pass band. Of course, the hourglass is not as known as many of the filters, but we do have a very nice flat, slightly Equiripple pass band with Equiripple stop band. And if we wanted to see our reflection coefficient, if we select reflection coefficient, don't need that. We can see our reflection zeros, turn off the phase, our reflection zeros in an hourglass are inverse on the frequency scale, the inverse of the transmission zeros. That's the hourglass's claim to fame. And of course the elliptic is a very well-known uh, filter. Now the default is 0.05 dBs of ripple, but we have one selected for so that we can see it. And we can see here, we depress the left mouse key. We can see that we have go from zero to one dBs of ripple in the pass band. And of course we have the equi ripple stop band. And we can select the dB, 60 dB, or in this case, a frequency 1.6 gigahertz. Custom filters, we can enter custom transfer functions. Our matched filter, usually larger than this. Now this is matched in the terms of communication matching, where the impulse response is a square, as close to a square as possible, sometimes useful in communications functions. And of course the delay filter. And here we can have, here we see that we have a flat group delay and we have a zero dB or uniform uh, magnitude throughout the frequency spectrum. And we can see our time response here, roughly one nanosecond of delay, zero to one nanosecond. Uh, that's, this was by design, the default value up here, one nanosecond of group delay, or excuse me, one, na one nanosecond time delay. And we can see the one nanosecond constant group delay correlates to the one nanosecond time delay in the step response. Uh, that concludes our discussion of the basic filter solutions design features. Thank you.